we're in Tarragona with, how do we pronounce your name for real? I say Rena or Reina or something. Reina. 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 And Meilertz? Meilertz. Okay. It's A, it's two times. Meilertz. Reina Meilertz. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hard part. Reina, <laughs> Reina, what do you do? What's your job? At this moment, yeah. uh, I'm a professor in comparative literature at KU Leuven, meaning uh, the Flemish University in uh, Flanders, Belgium. And I'm teaching there several courses on comparative literature, one course, on European literatures, uh, meaning being occupied with the canon, the European canon for mm -hmm. Homer. In what language? Oh, everything then. Yes. yes okay. everything. So it's real everything. complete what you do. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah? It's okay. first bachelor's course, so it's very basic, mm -hmm. but uh, it's real complete, yes. It's, uh, I try to tell them as much as possible about translation, how translation shaped uh, the relationships between European literatures, between the European canon. Um, I teach translation and multilingualism in that literature and I teach, yes, a course on the conceptualization of uh, and the questioning of the concept of Western literature, mm -hmm. the, the, in fact, the aspect of the Western in it. Okay, so translation is just one component. Yeah, in it's a small component. And you're actually called uh, general literature, but it's comparative, the same thing, general. Yeah, it's yeah. the same. Is that a problematic position to do translation studies in? No, not really. Uh, it's not ideal, as far as I would like. Uh, I would like to have translation more as a core aspect of my courses. But the situation in mm. Belgium is that um, since I am uh, within a department of literary studies, uh, I'm not teaching in the Department of Translation Studies, which is the Lessius University College, as far as Leuven is concerned, and which is uh, the Brussels University College, so there uh, students are trained in translation right. and interpreting. Um, um, yeah, that's not where I teach. So the relationship with translation is there through literature, to comparative mm -hmm. literature, but it's not, um, sometimes it's not going as far as I I would like for my teaching, for my research, I, uh, I feel pretty... It's a good position to have a, a theoretical perspective yes. on translation, yes. or historical, sure. especially. Of, also, yeah. yes, historical and theoretical, that's what I like to, to do and that's what I, I develop. And that's, that's, that's really okay. okay. You've been you important know. recently in the developing sociology of translation. Yes. Is that how you see your own research program at the moment, or, mm. or are you more focused on Bel translation within Belgium as well? It's been yes, the corpus is translation within Belgium, and, mm. and one of the lines I'm developing there is indeed, um, as from a theoretical methodological perspective, has to do with uh, the sociological approach. And in fact, it, it reflects a bit my uh, personal evolution. I was educated in Leuven. Mm -hmm. I was along there by the descriptive translation mm -hmm. studies paradigm, yes. texts and only the texts. Yes. And gradually I, I came to discover, especially through my interest in, in the Belgian um, situation, um, I came to discover how important the, the, the perspective of the people, the agency mm -hmm. is. And in fact, that is what I'm stressing more now. So, uh, very concretely, what I'm interested in now and what I'm uh, I have a research project on that uh, issue um, together with other people, is um, uh, the relationships between um, the activities of writing, uh, translating, self-translating, multilingual writing in a period uh, within Belgium, uh, end 19th century, beginning uh, 20th century, mm -hmm. Uh, where many people, mm -hmm. especially Flemish um, cultural actors, were bilingual and um, had to choose between one of the two languages. Um, 
sometimes we're writing in those two languages with many reactions, negative reactions to that, uh, or self-translating, mm -hmm. and so on. So what is it, the social trajectory of these people? What is That's very biographical, in fact. It's about their socialization process, yes, it's about their right. habitus, so that's what that's I'm what I said, really drilled in, <laughs> of course, uh, but not from a traditional biographical perspective, of course. Uh, and uh, I, I try to follow these people's uh, yeah, socialization process mm -hmm. and, and how that relates uh, to their activities and how these activities relate to each other and there, I think, um, I can bring in some aspects and perspectives on, on translation studies concepts because for me, um, speaking about multilingual writing versus um, self-translation, I see them as, as, as a continuum of activities. If you call mm -hmm. it self-translation instead of multilingual writing, I think it reveals more about your definition of what, what translation is mm -hmm. than about what these activities in say have, have uh, or, um, how they would be different. I, yes. I, I don't see them as, as different. So I, I want to work on that also from that perspective. So how do we define these concepts? I think we define them much too much uh, in opposition to each other. Right. Right. You're, you're, you're looking at something that happened over a hundred years ago, though, that's the object. Ah, but, well, no, until, well, until well. beginning 20th century also, okay. it's uh, yeah. until 1940s, so to say. Oh, okay, that's World a big War beginning, II. okay. World War right. II is, is yeah. the... Um, it's a break mm. in, in, in Belgium. Yeah. Now, I'm just wondering, you mentioned, uh, depending on how you define translation, I mean, there's a translation concept in the object, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be different from what we think translation is now. Mm -hmm. Is that a problem or is that productive? I think it's productive. I think yeah. it's productive because it, it makes us see our actual blindness mm -hmm. for some um, activities and for, for some yeah for some activities which have been very instrumental, which have been important at that time. Uh, because they were accepted or because they were not accepted. People were treated as traitors. People yes. were, were uh, set in a very negative light uh, and so on, which happens today also. So there were, are many links with, with certain actual situations. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it, it, it may reveal you know, what I call a kind of conceptual blindness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we go back? You, you mentioned that you were trained in, Bel in, 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 in Leuven, where you're now teaching. Uh, when you were thinking about what to do doctoral research on, did you imagine you would get to where you are now? Is, is that a, a, a straight trajectory for you? No. What's happened? Not at all. Um, can I go back to my master's? Sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Year, years mm -hmm. back. Um, so I did my, my master's degree. It was in literary studies, in linguistics and literature, actually. Mm -hmm. But with a slight specialization in translation studies, and that's how I became a student of Schuster and Bears. And I did my master thesis on translation in Belgium. And then I left university. I didn't know what a PhD was. What did you do? Uh, I went to teach first in a, in a, in a university college. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I became an assistant, a teaching assistant, in fact, in a faculty of economics where I was teaching business French mm -hmm. and where it was accepted that you did research but not too much in a way mm -hmm. and I was then developing the idea of, of doing research and I'm really indebted to José pushing me, mm. uh, José calling me to his office in Leuven and saying okay now you're there you, know, you have to do a PhD and uh, he was like following me and saying, come on, yeah. do it, you can do it. And, and it brought me back to my, my first love and research, so to say, these difficult relationships in Belgium, literary and political and ideological functions of translation in Belgium, and that's also what I did my, my PhD. Okay, yeah. but it was really translation within that political context yes. at the beginning, so yes. this, the sociological thing isn't new yeah. as uh, such. No. Or, or is it? I don't know. Um, let's say that I started from this sexual perspective. Mm. 
I, I really took over the DST and polysystem models. Mm. But going into research, into archives and reading people's letters, uh, yeah. like intuitively I was, I was brought to, to, hey, this is, this is something the additional, yeah, this yeah. is something that, that brings into, not a different or not a contradictory perspective, of course not. It, perhaps it was like something that I, I, I thought of in the beginning, but mm. I, and I, 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 I felt it was important during my PhD research without conceptualizing it at that moment. There was few conceptualization of, of the people in my in my PhD uh, itself. Mm. But it, it was like, yeah. But beginning. it was certainly contextual. If we have an opposition between text and context. Mm -hmm. uh, the approach you're working from from the beginning had the context there. Yeah, wasn't. yeah, but more from a discourse perspective. Okay. Yeah. So I would I would go into political texts, mm. into uh, uh, more general text, and the image of Flanders because I was studying mm. translation of Flemish literature into French, mm. and I was dealing also with the whole perception of Flanders. Mm. Can I uh, an industry question? Your your first language is is Flemish, Dutch. Second would then be. French, yeah. and English, German, Italian, Italian etc. Okay. <laughs> Stop. The, 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 the now, uh, okay, late 19th century Belgium, from your research it's very clear the language of culture, the language of high culture was French. Sure. And these days that's no longer the case uh, for the Flemish community. So there's been a radical change there. Here's the question. I was astounded the first time I went to your university and Josie Lambert, a Flemish speaker, was speaking with Lieven Dulst, a Flemish speaker. In what language? In French. In French. Yeah. Yeah. Is that normal? Is that the case? And you were teaching French, you mentioned. Is that, uh, is that... I was teaching French. I'm not teaching it anymore. But that's, mm. that's a coincidence. That's, mm. that's, uh, I regret, of course. Um, well, uh, People speaking French among themselves uh, in the institutional context, context of the university within Romance languages and literatures mm. was was very common. Mm. When I was a student, I was expected when I, I went to my professor's office, professors of French of course, to speak to them in, in French. With Josie Lambert you would have spoken? Yes, French. French. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Not anymore as a PhD student. Ah. The other relationship was was more You changed languages. Yes. Yes. But as a student it had to yeah. be it had to be in French. And this was a time, and that's a big difference. This was a time in which when we as students started Romance languages, um, we were said, okay. French language, you need to know it when you start. We don't learn you to speak uh, properly French and, 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 and to write it and so on. It's about the literature, it's about the linguistics and so on. Whereas now uh, they have brought in language courses, especially for French, more for French today than, than for English, because French has become, in two generations, it has become a foreign language in, in Flanders. Yes. Yes. Flanders has lost its, its French. Uh, or, or, or Flemish has become a, a language of culture, or a full culture. Or, I don't yes, know, yes, but it is a minority language, if you consider it on a, on a not, not world really. scale. Yes, it well, is. Yeah, it is. World scale. We are closing ourselves from the world. It's, it, I feel it as a pity. I, can, I understand the people's battle to, to have full language rights mm. in Flemish. Mm. And they were so successful because they did it the whole, the whole way. They went so we you think they're too successful? From a local <laughs> so perspective, they are not too successful. But yeah. if, you, if you see it in context, if you see it in the international context, and the world is international to a great extent today, it's, it's a pity, I think. Yeah, because now there is such a hostility People towards French, especially, yes, yes, and, and, yes. and especially in Leuven, because there the university remained long time bilingual, mm. even after the linguistic laws and so on. I will not go into mm. these de details, but um, hostility in the street, uh, if you ask, you, know, you would ask your way in, 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 in French. Mm. Um, yes, I know. You might not receive I made an answer. that mistake. <laughs> well, is it a mistake, in fact? But at the same time, your university is a place where everybody speaks excellent English. 
That's Seriously, right. the bus drivers speak excellent English. Is it? Okay, well, all um. the better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we lost, we lost the other... Language, which is less yeah. important, of course. There were, has been a switch. But, but the bilingualism of the people, the real genuine bilingualism is, is, has, has diminished. Ah. If, if I compare it, it's a detail, but my grandmother, she was living in Flanders, she, she, she studied in French. Mm. Of course, there was no choice then. But was it fair? Perhaps not. But schools, good schools, and university was in French. She didn't go to university. Final question, what kind of research do we need? In the particular areas that you've been working on, what would you like young doctoral students to be tackling? Hmm. Um, next to this sociological line I, I, I spoke about, um, I'm troubled by another uh, research line for the moment. It has to do with this model, these multilingual societies, and it's linked to, to my personal um, uh, interest in Belgium also. Uh, it's what I call research in translation policies, mm. uh, on translation policies. Um, and um, uh, my claim is, in fact, I start, I start there from a claim. My claim is that there is no translation policy without a language policy. Mm. It's, it's obvious, in fact. It, it, there is there is a like a, a gap there. Uh, language policy meaning rules for language use in public domain. So it's a restricted mm -hmm. definition, of course. Rules for language use in public domain, which is it's it's very important because it regulates people's access to institutions, to administration. It it regulates people's uh, contact with the authorities. It's one of the basic democratic principles. And my claim is that what is always forgotten in this very fundamental issue for today's societies is that you cannot have a translation pol uh, language policy without a translation policy. Uh, meaning that whatever society, especially societies that want to call themselves democratic, they need rules for translation, the use of translation in public domain. Can you get a translation in administration? Can you have a translation in parliament? Can you have this? And the two go together, and I think they are they are hugely important, and they become more and more important since, of course, you have this gap between the linguistic and territorial principles of the nation mm -hmm. state. And okay, we have globalization, but nation state remains very important in many aspects. So these linguistic and territorial principles, in a way, they are at at odds with um, uh, the multilingualism, with the mobility of, of, of the populations. Mm. And I think translation has a role to play, and translation studies then has a role to play in securing people's uh, linguistic and translational rights, in, in integrating people. Uh, and I think there it's, it's unclear, there is no research, there is no empirical evidence, uh, there are no research mo models to find out what could be the link between translation and, and integration, so to say, mm -hmm. giving people access to basic services in society, and I think that's a huge challenge.